Uh, Rick Santorum has this new ad out, which is called Obamaville. And it creates, it, it paints this picture of what America would look like if President Obama is reelected as this kind of post-apocalyptic dystopian world. I'll play some of the audio and video of the ad for you, and then we'll talk about it. And it's, it's um, reminiscent of, well, I'll just play it, and you be the judge as to what it reminds you of. Imagine a small American town two years from now if Obama is reelected. Small businesses are struggling and families are worried about their jobs and their future. The wait to see a doctor is ever increasing. Gas prices through the roof and their freedom of religion under attack. <laughs> and every day, the residents of this town must come to grips with the harsh reality that a rogue nation and sworn American enemy has become a nuclear threat. threat, 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 threat. Welcome to a place where one president's failed policies really hit home. Welcome to Obamaville. Okay, so there's the ad. And um, <laughs> I honestly don't even know how to react to this thing. It's one of these things where we know that negative campaign ads work, and that's certainly a negative ad. But we also know that intellectually people know that politicians distort and exaggerate in campaign ads. So um, I just wish there was a way for these ads to stop being effective and then maybe we could start eliminating some of them. It's a very well done ad. It's, it's well produced, right, Natan? I mean, it's, it's as a... As a, as a uh, I was amazed by the production value of that. I mean, I was expecting like, you know, crappy Herman audio Kane. with like background noise, kind of like that Basil Marceau ad that <laughs> we saw a while back. Right. But that was like, you know, a really good movie trailer. <laughs> It really was. Yeah, there's no question about it. And Lewis, I know I haven't mentioned this. It's better if my volume is up during during uh, segments. I know I, over the last three years, it's, it's never come up. Um, That's something we're in, we're, uh, we disagree on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's certainly a, dis a disagreement of opinion. This sort, sort of thing does undermine the election process, though, doesn't it? I mean, it's appealing to, to it's really appealing to, I hate to say it because negative ads are so effective that we can't say they only work on dumb people, right? They really work on everybody, but it appeals to the unthinking part of, of voters, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. And uh, I, I would even go forward and say this undermines the way the U.S. is viewed around the world because the reality is that the, the opinion of the US was so low under George W. Bush, and now it actually has started to rebound. And this ad really paints a picture where it's just, it, it's it, it's so patently false, and we understand that. But um, I, I don't, uh, I don't know, I don't, uh, I, I, don't, I don't like the way that this is going. Another interesting fact, notice that in this ad, the only non-white people that are shown are Iranian or President Obama himself. That's also an interesting fact about the ad. Yeah, this is the type of ad where uh, nothing is is overlooked. Everything is very calculated. No question. So uh, there is no there was no mistake or, or coincidence there. Not at all. 